Good morning. There is a crisis across U.S. universities which is caused by a sharp decline in the number of foreign students coming over to study. Chinese students in particular are choosing to remain here in their home country and this is a real problem to U.S. university budgets. And this is well documented and it's getting a lot of media attention. But there's actually a much bigger problem for U.S. universities and it's happening at the top end in our university research departments. Many universities, especially the biggest and most prestigious ones, they earn a lot more money from conducting research and development than from collecting tuition and selling food in their cafeterias. For example, if a hundred university freshmen from China decide to study here instead of going to California to study, that's about five million dollars in revenues that California colleges won't be getting. And that's not great. But California would far rather create a patent for new technology or medicine that can throw off five million dollars in profits forever. That's the business model for our top research universities. And that business model is blowing up because of top Chinese scientists and engineers who are leaving to take posts here in China. These documents come from the University of California and they explain the very complex procedure of dividing up funds that come in to the California University system as a result of scientific breakthroughs and patents that are awarded to researchers working there. These formulas are similar to other public university systems across the country. All employees and anyone else who uses research facilities sign a patent acknowledgement, which says that the university owns all the inventions and that the revenues are shared between the university and the inventor. Inventors are paid 35% of net royalties and fees received by the university and 15% of royalties and fees get paid to the inventor's campus. That's the school within the school, in other words. For example, the engineering school at University of California at Davis. And as we see, it gets really complicated. The research and development are a big business. For 2022, here are the R&D expenditures across U.S. higher education, totaling over $97 billion. Over half of that, about $54 billion, came from the federal government. State and local governments chipped in another $4.9 billion. Institution funds are investors and includes university endowment funds. And private business was another $5.7 billion. U.S. universities also attract about $1.5 billion a year from foreign sources. Here is another breakdown by research and development by field. And what we find here is that research and development is heavily in favor of the hard sciences and in applications where new patents can generate big profits. There is the $97 billion again at the top and $76 billion went into the sciences. Computer science, earth science, life science, math, physical science. Psychology and the other social sciences in total came in at only $4.5 billion or so. Engineering is broken out separately. Another $15.6 billion were put into engineering R&D. Electrical engineering by itself attracted $3.4 billion in R&D investment compared to $3.1 billion for all the social sciences combined. This is a study published in the National Academy of Sciences that surveyed hundreds of Chinese scientists in the United States. They found that there is a steep increase in the number of Chinese scientists and researchers who are leaving positions in the U.S. to go to China, and they're trying to understand why. There is a widespread fear among these researchers, and it's resulting in a loss of scientific talent. Here are the numbers based on a relative baseline of the time period from 2005 to 2010. Researchers are always coming and going for lots of reasons, so they wanted to normalize those numbers from the previous years. The year 2018 was the beginning of the China Initiative in the United States. In engineering and computer science then, the blue line is at seven which means that there are seven times as many departures in those fields that should be expected given normal conditions. Math and physical sciences at 4x and live sciences is also four times.
Now that graph represents actual departures, Chinese scientists who have left. Of those who are staying, many of them report that they intend to avoid applying for federal grants. 84% of those were afraid of potential legal liabilities. 65% said they have relationships with other Chinese persons or institutions that would be a big problem for them. And if it's a big problem for them, that they won't even bother asking for this U.S. government money. It's a huge problem for the U.S. universities they're working for. In 2022, the U.S. government gave $54 billion to universities to do research. And large numbers of Chinese researchers at those U.S. universities say it's too risky to ask for any of that money. This is a paper from Stanford University, and their summary is here. China is the most important foreign supplier of U.S. scientists. Since the China Initiative began in 2018, Chinese started leaving. Departures jumped 75%, and most of those went back to positions in China. 61% of scientists and researchers are considering leaving the United States, and almost half are refusing to take any of that $54 billion or so our government wants to give away. So China is going to become the beneficiary of all of this. About 20,000 Chinese scientists have gone, and Stanford describes here push and pull factors. Pull is what attracts scientists to China. Big Chinese investments in science, prestige, money, and lots of talented people to work with. Over a thousand life scientists left the U.S. for China in 2021 alone. Push factors are those which push these scientists away from the United States. Many report feeling unwelcome. 72% say they didn't feel safe. Big worries about their relationships in China. And 86% say it's harder to recruit top students compared to previous years. Of the ones who report feeling fearful, here are the fields. Engineering, computer science, life science, tenured faculty, researchers who are working with federal money, all of those are big profit centers to universities. The patents in engineering and computer science and life science are worth billions of dollars to the U.S. universities. And the government is paying billions of dollars to cover all the research costs. And it's the researchers in these fields that are leaving. Stanford again, the largest single source of funding is the federal government and 45% of researchers of Chinese descent refuse to go after the money. Chinese media do report on high-level arrivals, and as we go through some of these, consider the billions of dollars in future revenue streams that are going to be lost by U.S. universities and gained here in China instead, as they do this research and generate patents here for Chinese colleges. South China Morning Post has a handful of the highest profile researchers listed here. Master researcher in physics, a star mathematician, another in biochemistry, a top expert in hypersonic science and super fast fluids, whatever that is. Math again, health science, brain research, structural biology, marine data, new energy, NASA data science. These are individual scientists and each one represents hundreds of others who do cutting edge research that is immensely valuable to the university where this research is being done. How many patents and how many multi-billion dollar patents just from the people on this list will be going to China now? Nanotechnology, hypersonic design, artificial intelligence, medicine. When 18-year-old college kids go to college in China instead of the United States, it's easy to do that multiplication and figure out how much tuition is going away. But when these scientists leave, it's literally incalculable, the billions of dollars that are going out the door. Here is another. Wang John Lin was at Georgia Tech for 30 years. He created the nano energy field, nano generators. These are self-powered systems that led to wireless technology that doesn't need a battery to run. He's now in Beijing. The breakthroughs here are for implantable medical devices that don't need to have the batteries swapped out later. It's heart pacemakers that never need replacing, and it's hormone therapies and cochlear implants and brain implants to prevent seizures 
and scores of other applications that we can't even imagine yet. This is a field that's going to be worth a trillion dollars a year in sales. And he, he just got on a plane in Atlanta and flew to Beijing. And now that entire industry is going to be built right over there, along with entire university departments that are going to be built around it. And now all that's going to happen in Beijing instead of Georgia. A trillion dollars, just one guy. This is Suzhou, Jiangsu province. Be good. Nature, in our nation. 